Hello, it's Jason here, and today I've got something unusually exciting to show you. Come, come closer. You'll have to, you have to come a bit closer. Come closer. Ooh, new kind of jack. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Jason, that's just a 4.4 millimeter jack. We've all seen those before. What can be so incredibly special about this? Well, Ico that make them kindly reached out to me, said we've got this new 4.4 millimeter jack coming out. Do you want to test it? And I'm meh. But then they showed me some pictures, and I'm like, oh, you've solved one of life's great problems. I love a bit of design, you know, where you see a problem, you redesign the thing, you fix the problem. Because on a standard 4.4 millimeter jack, most of them, you've got lots of these little rings that you've got to solder to, which are, which are really close together and it makes bridging between one and another really easy, especially if you're using high quality fat cables like we do. It's quite easy to get one wire touching two contacts, which is going to cause you no end of troubles. So it's very fine soldering because they're also very thin. It doesn't, if you're soldering a fat wire to it, it doesn't hang on very well. You haven't got a lot of meat to solder to. It's generally, you know, it works, but it's not ideal. And then these ones, these new ones from Ico, they've got individual stakes for each of the wires. So you've got a much bigger surface area which you can solder to and they're also much easier to separate out. You know, you could put a bit of tape in between these and you wouldn't get any bridges between them. It's a, it's a really clever solution and I really like these. So this might be the best 4.4 millimeter jack I've seen for DIY use. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a set of Grado headphones. I've got some SR60s that are just knocking around doing nothing. And I'm thinking that we can convert those to 4.4 balance and we'll just see how easy the operation is if you've got a really decent jack that's well designed like that. Because normal jacks, if, you, if, you're not, you, if you're not very good at soldering, you're gonna have a real bad time. Whereas this one, I think, could be the best DIY jack. It's expensive, but it's gonna save you a lot of heartache going with something like this. So. Let's head up to the workshop and have a play. Welcome to our workshop. Okay, so here we have some of the Grado SR60Xs. I can't remember why we got these in. I think it was to measure the drivers or something like that, but these have got, oh, a terrible cable. Grado needs some help designing some new cables. Speak to this guy. So, so this is how the Ico Jack comes in the retail packaging. It's, it's a relatively expensive jack, so you get some Pretty fancy packaging. I wish there was a little bit less wasted plastic, you know, this could all come in a nice little cardboard box or something, so that might be something for future development. Less less plastics, and it I don't think it needs to have quite such such a lot of packaging. There we go. Ico five pole jack. What do we get in here? Ah, so we've got a little grub screw there, that must be for tightening it down. That's handy. That's the actual jack itself. Cool. So, first things first, I suppose. Get past the point of no return and snip the jack off. Cool. So on this, uh, on the basic grados, you'll have like four wires in there, two for each side. On the more expensive ones, you might have eight or, or more wires in there with three or four going to each side, depending on what range you're, you're in. So I'm just gonna strip this back a bit just so we've got something to work with. There we go, so there's our four wires underneath. So we've got two grounds, uh, a left and a right, and then we're gonna use a multimeter to figure out which ground and left and right go together. You'll have to excuse the sound of the rain. I'm up in the, up in the roof in the workshop. Uh, but as you can see, I've basically pre-tinned these wires and I've made the right plus and right minus a bit shorter than the left plus and left minus because on this connector, these are longer pins, so we're going to solder the shorter ones there and then the longer ones will reach back to these. So this one is going to be right minus, this one's going to be right plus. I think that's left minus and left plus, but I'll just have to check those with a multimeter when we get to those. I've already put the boot, where is it? I've already put the boot on the cable ready. If you have something like this with a slightly frayed edge, it might be worth putting some tape or something around there so you can slide this boot on a little bit more easily. But you know, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. So first of all, we're gonna solder the right minus to the right minus connector. There we go. And because we've got a nice long solder joint on there, it's got a large contact area, so hopefully it should be a nice strong joint. Now we're gonna do the right plus just over the other side. And it's a little bit long, just gonna trim that back just a touch. Don't like touching any of the other connections. There we go, <laughs> like a dream. 
like a dream. Okay, so now we're gonna just use the multimeter to figure out which one's the positive and negative. So, okay, so this side is positive, the right hand side is negative. So I'll do the positive first. What I might do is these solders that we've just done, I'm gonna wrap those in PTFE tape just because they've got some slight sharp edges on them. Could trim that down. Uh, but just in case over time that wears through the, the other one, I'm just going to give them a bit of extra protection by wrapping them in in PTFE tape. So this is just um, Teflon plumber's tape. It's, good, it's a good insulator. Right, so that's just covering those solders we've just done. Now do the right positive. Alright, so that's that's done. And then the final one, the, the left minus. Uh, again, just trim it back slightly. So it's the right length to fit on there. Alright, so there again we can see we've got nice big solder joints like this one. It's not my niece's work, but uh, you know, I'm behind a camera. It's not the easiest thing to do. <laughs> Maybe a little bit slightly bigger blob of solder than I wanted, but uh, there you go. So they're nicely securely on there. So this, these connectors there, oh, yeah, you can get, a, it's basically one of the only 4.4s where you can get all four wires soldered on really securely uh, with a decent length of connection on there with a fat wire. So I'm just gonna cover those up as well with a bit of PTFE. All right, let's do the exciting bit of screwing the back on. All right, so you've got a steel body and a plastic thread, so you just want to make sure you don't cross-thread it. That's the, that's the main thing. There we go, that's threaded on nicely. Pop our grub screw in the hole. Bada bing, bada boom. Nice. So there you have it, some Grado SR60s converted to a balanced 4.4 relatively easily. So with a really good solid connection. So there you go, if you're thinking of converting something like some Grados to balance with a 4.4 and you're not super confident at soldering, these ones, the Aco or Ico jacks, they are very easy to solder. Like not super easy, like you know, soldering it's always takes some practice, but there's much you get a much nicer solder connection with those stakes than you do on the little rings. And yeah, you just get a much more solid connection and there's less chance of you bridging it, especially if you put a piece of paper in between the little stakes in there. So you you really can't go wrong because it'll it'll stop it from being able to solder bridge between them. So yeah, so I think those they're expensive. I think they're like 40 or 50 dollars, but if you're not that confident on soldering, you're much more likely to be able to complete the job with one of these, whereas you might get through two or three connectors on the other one and have a lot of hair pulling and stuff. I'd say it's kind of like a time versus money thing. It's it's not a bad investment. You know, obviously, if they're very cheap headphones like these, it might not be cost effective. But, yeah, like if you compare that to the Pentacon ones, which are like the legit 4.4s, uh, they're, they're a similar price. I think they're like 50 or 60 for their basic ones. So, so yeah, these are... These are good, they're a nice jack and easy to solder. Um, I, I'm going to ask them if they could possibly do us a wide body one because then we can use it with some of our super fat cables, which would be nice. It's just a little bit slim for some of our wires. But yeah, for, for, for an original Grado cable or HT600 or something like that, it's a nice, it's a nice jack to work with. Uh, Ico were very kind and also sent me some samples of their other jacks. I'm thinking I might build some other cables. We'll do a 4-pin XLR to Hi-Fi Man. So hopefully I'll have that up next week. We'll do a full cable build. I'll, we'll build a custom super awesome cable and we'll use some of these some of these connectors. So if you're interested in seeing how to make yourself a high-end cable for some Focals or something, or some Denons or something, we'll be making one of those cables next week. So uh, yeah, I hope that you found that interesting. And I know it's, I don't know, I get excited by stuff like this, but uh, if you do, let me know in the comments or is this a little bit too niche? I, I don't know. But anyway, it's been, uh, it's been awesome hanging out and I will see you guys again.